we asked the commissioner about employee misclassification and he wouldn't go into any specifics um, on cases because he has to adjudicate on them. I don't work for the government, so I will give you some background as to what employee misclassification is, and then we'll cut to his response to it. Um, so employee misclassification is a big issue that's coming up now with the gig economy. Um, basically what a lot of these companies are doing, like Amazon, Uber, Postmates, is they have a large network of employees who are micromanaged like employees, but they're all classified as independent contractors. Um, why is that an issue? Well, um, most of our labor laws and benefits and our liability laws are all designed around a more traditional model, like with you had a W-2 worker, right? So companies that use this independent contracting system, their employees aren't eligible for paid sick time. Or say, for example, someone who delivers for Amazon independently, they get all their orders from Amazon, they only work for Amazon, they're told where to move, where to turn by Amazon, but technically they're an independent contractor. So, say this person is unlicensed, driving around with faulty brakes, they get into an accident and seriously injure somebody because they're trying to keep up with their Amazon delivery route, right? The family can't sue Amazon because it's an independent contractor, it's not Amazon. Another big issue with it is unemployment, right? So independent contractors aren't eligible for unemployment and the companies don't have to pay unemployment taxes. So, so with Uber, for example, they're competing with small mom and pop livery car services. Like here in Cliffside, we have Sal's Taxi or in Fort Lee, they have Babes, right? Those little companies have to pay unemployment tax. Uber doesn't have to pay unemployment tax because all their employees are independent contractors. So, you might say, well, that's their choice. Um, why do we have to give them unemployment? They know what they're getting into. Well, first of all, I personally want those people to have unemployment. But even if you don't, even if you aren't concerned about the individual, the purpose of unemployment insurance isn't just to protect the individual. It's also to protect the economy as a whole so that depressions don't tailspin out of control, right? So in a mass unemployment event like the pandemic, the government is gonna step in and take care of society as a whole to keep things from going over the edge. In the past, independent workers weren't covered by this, but independent workers were a small percentage, so that really wasn't an issue. Now, with the gig economy, they're essentially too big to fail, we could say, right? So, all these companies like Uber, they didn't have unemployment for their workers, but when push came to shove, the government came in and stepped in and created emergency unemployment benefits for all those self-employed workers. And who paid for it? We paid for it. Uber didn't pay for it. Amazon didn't pay for it. Postmates didn't pay for it. The federal taxpayer paid for the unemployment benefits for all these gig economy companies. So this is a new problem, right? And the old laws are hard to um, apply to this new system. And these companies are using that system to kind of get away with not um, paying for the same benefits and protecting the same rights that a lot of other companies have to. So New Jersey in particular is one state that even before the pandemic was working a lot towards um, correcting some of these issues and trying to go after companies for what they call employee misclassification. Um, so in November of 2019, uh, the Department of Labor basically went to Uber and gave them a giant bill um, for hundreds of million dollars and said, you haven't been paying your unemployment taxes. All these people who work for you in New Jersey are employees. Um, you." treat them like employees, you profit off them like employees, so now you have to pay un unemployment benefits like their employees. Uh, so they sent them a huge tax bill, and of course Uber um, sued back and said, no, they're independent contractors, we don't have to pay the bill. And that um, case is still in court. Uh, so now let's go to the commissioner on employee misclassification. As, a, as commissioner, I have a, a lot of say in the, in the, in the case. Uh, I have to make an adjudication at some point, so I can't talk about yeah. specific companies. Uh, but clearly our, our uh, investments and our focus on worker misclassification has been a big one in the Murphy administration. Uh, and it's not just about protecting those workers. When you think about a worker, uh, for whatever company, you know, and I'll be very clear, if a worker wants to be a 1099 employee, wants to be an independent contractor, I want to protect them too. I want them to be able to have the benefits of being an independent contractor, meaning they can set their own wages, set their own prices, uh, be able to go out and, and solicit new business. But the problem is a lot of folks are being classified as independent contractors, but being treated as employees, which is not what the law says. 
We have a very strong worker classification law in New Jersey, uh, known as the ABC test, uh, which is the gold standard, which is now being used by other states as they try to increase the protection for their workers. Uh, and also it's important that we're protecting other businesses. If a business is playing by the rules and paying into the UI trust fund, which has never been more important, uh, that is, that is a, an expense to them. Uh, and to have a competitor come in and have workers working in the same industry and not paying those assessments uh, into the UI trust fund, not only does it hurt those workers because that money won't, they won't be eligible for unemployment because we don't have their, uh, their information in here, it keeps them from being eligible for minimum wage, it keeps them from being eligible for paid family leave, it keeps them from being eligible for uh, earned sick leave, and all the other protections that come with being an employee they're all thrown out the window when somebody is misclassified. So all the work that you and your colleagues have done to bring these protections to workers, whether it be minimum wage, like I said, earned sick, expansion of paid family leave, uh, equal pay, uh, now uh, COVID-related discrimination, all these protections for workers go out the door when someone's classified as a 1099 worker in the state, or anywhere, quite frankly. That's why it's so important. It's not about assessments just for the trust fund, which also protects other employers. It's about protecting those employees and giving them the hard-earned benefits that you and I and, our, and your predecessors and my predecessors have fought for for workers in the state.